big, huge guy, and a guy like that has been sensed in here. There's actually a stone out the front by the front door, and any bodyguard would have had to have been able to lift that above his head. Um, but this, this man here has been sensed on a number of occasions, um, often in this doorway here. And we have actually recorded a, a sound from in here. Um, we have trigger objects on the table there um, with a camcorder filming them. We were on another level and as we came back, three ladies of the group came back through the green room. We could hear our footsteps approaching. Um, and just before we came through the door, there was a male grunting sound recorded on the camcorder here. It wasn't a very pleasant sound either, rather perverted grunt, but that's what we've got from in here. During one of our investigations we decided to try a new technique, which was to use a red light. Uh, the theory is that the red light is supposed to enhance physical activity. So our idea was to leave a light plugged in somewhere in the castle, go somewhere else and then come back and hopefully there'd be more physical activity going on in the area. So during our investigation, I came up here with the red light and plugged it in in this room. Tried plugging it in that wall and adjusted it a wee bit and it didn't seem right. So I decided to plug it in on this wall here, behind me. And if I left it on this step here, it could light up some of that room and some of this room. So I did that and we went downstairs and we had the rest of our vigil. When we came up, the light looked slightly different as we approached. And the light that had left on this step here, had ended up about here. And as you can see on this side, this was where the lamp was, and it's right in the walkway. So I'm wondering if maybe if somebody was coming up the stairs, they maybe just kicked it to get out of the way. It's a theory. But as we know, there was nobody in this part of the castle, so I can't explain it. I sensed a man in this room and I felt very, very uncomfortable from him. I really felt like he was really in my face the whole time and he was picking on me. Usually in that situation I would step back and walk away from it. But I thought, no, no, I'll go with it, I'll go with it, see what he does. And I sensed that he was very angry and he was screaming about the four poster bed in the room not being his bed. And he wanted us out and um, I suddenly felt really overcome by emotion. It was just like a wave hitting me, and I felt absolute fury. That's the only way I can describe it, blind fury. I was so angry, but I was also just so, so upset. And um, I burst into tears, and I had to get taken out of the room. I couldn't even see the stairs, so I was going up the stairs. And again, as soon as I went over the threshold into the green room, I was absolutely fine. Just wet face from tears, but the that's bed is actually a replica, it's not an original piece, so I don't know if that's maybe why he was angry as well. Well, part of it, maybe. I did sense that um, I felt that he'd had an injury and that um, he died as a consequence of the injury, but I think it was probably something like blood poisoning or something, you know, it's taken or uh, been infected and it's taken a while. He certainly knew he was going to die before he died. I certainly got that feeling from him. And I just still, to this day, I feel uncomfortable in this room. I don't feel quite happy here. And another weird thing, which we haven't been able to explain as yet, is the recording of some chimes in this room, which sounded very much like an old mantel clock. Um, we were filming in this room, the camera was over in that corner, and we were all sitting on the floor, and we recorded two or three times this faint chiming noise and it definitely sounds like a clock. Yeah, like a clock yeah. We've tried to replicate the noise, we've gone over all our equipment, we've even checked the bells that are up in the green room, there's a few bells up there, there's absolutely nothing that makes the same noise as that and as yet we just don't know what that is. We didn't hear it at the time which is often what happens. And was there not a visual anomaly captured in this room as well? Yeah, which is Funnily enough, you've positioned the camera in the very same spot that this anomaly was filmed. Um, and it was yourself, Nat, that was filming on that night. And the rest of us, funnily enough, were standing in this place, this position. Um, and it, it was dark, the infrared, uh, the night vision was on, and Natalie was filming. We were all standing over here. In fact, some of us had our hands in our pockets. We were just standing, talking, and an anomaly appeared just in front of the camera 
like a swirling white, so to speak, a greyish white mm -hmm. anomaly. And again, we haven't been able to explain what that is. Nobody saw it. Um, Natalie saw it at the time on the camcorder screen, because you did mention it at the time. Mm -hmm. And we haven't yet worked out what that is. So we're now in the attic of the castle. Um, didn't used to have a roof on it. The, the castle was built in the 1500s and this was covered over it at the end of that century. Um, I think there's been a few things heard up here. Um, we've been in this room and we've just been the only people in the castle and we've heard footsteps from down below in the green room. We've also thought we've heard a voice coming from the doorway in there while we've been here. Gone to investigate and there's been nobody there, but the sound has been recorded on voice recorder. Is there any particular spirits that you've sensed yourself in here? Yeah, there's a gentleman that hides in that turret there. He's quite reluctant to come forward. I think Tori's picked up on him as well. Seems quite scared. And there's also a gentleman that I've picked up in here from quite early on, probably from around the time the castle was built, I think. Um, he's kind of got leggings on in a long tunic style and shoulder length hair, very thin. And he doesn't seem very pleasant character and he's quite intimidating as well. It's quite noisy up here as so it does interfere with investigations. There's a lot of wind noise. You can hear the flag up above when it's when the flag's out. You can hear it flapping and banging against the pole. And there's also bats up here which fly around during the summer months. Anyway. Also in this area I picked up on a fight going on between two men and I think they're uh, Polish soldiers. Um, I do feel that it was sort of a light-hearted fight that got well out of hand and I feel like one of them was stabbed and probably died as a consequence of his injury. Um, it's got a good energy though, it's like people were standing around cheering it on, you can feel that kind of high energy of it. But the fight did get very, very serious.